Okay, as well as um, here is a Dropbox for you. Type as a design element, and you can see previous student examples here. All done with letters. See a nice portrait. See all done with letters. Taj Mahal, all done with letters. And a doggy, all done with letters. So you need just a simple kind of drawing done with letters. That's what your assignment is. Okay? All letters. So let's look at how to do that today. And then, um, I don't know what video this was. Oh, here's some more videos. Oh, and this is the one where I did the shamrock. Okay, so those are from last semester. Okay, so uh, let's talk about Illustrator and type again today. Remember, next class, we're going to be doing a mission patch or for NASA. It's a patch here. And then we go into your artist statement. So you should think about who picked their artist already. You guys didn't pick your artist yet? No, we should do some research into an artist that you want to use for this class. I'm thinking Dali. I don't know. Who likes Dali? Who likes Picasso? Picasso. Who likes Picasso? Picasso. I just went to Picasso Museum in 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 in, in Barcelona. No. Kodinsky. Oh yeah. Kodinsky Museum in Munich. Woo! That's like the best, best, best. Kodinsky Museum in Munich. Yeah, I know. Uh, yes. And then, of course, the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh. No? Andy Warhol? Pittsburgh? I, okay. I, I know I, I knew Andy Warhol's brother. No, I met him. I did buy one of his pieces. I bought one of Andy Warhol's brother's piece. I did. His brother. Yeah. Okay, so let's start thinking about an artist, okay? So uh, let's continue from our discussion from last class. Okay. Uh, again, mostly working with letters. So today uh, we're going to start off with glyphs. So, you know, we all look at our keyboard and we see all our symbols down there, right? But that's not all the things we can put on our screen, is it? There is a variety of other characters. What if you wanted to put the Enya in the end, right? It's not Kenyatta College. It's not Canada College. It's Kenyatta College, right? Up on 280 there. You see a sign? It's not Canada College. Kenyatta. Okay, so where is the Enya? It's not on my keyboard. I don't got a Spanish keyboard. So how do I put those things in? So uh, if you use the text tool, I'm going to put type in some text. Oops, why is that? What is that? That doesn't look like a good text. What is that? What is that? Uh-oh. What's going on here? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to start again. I'm say text tool, click, and I'm doing... Okay, not Canada College. All right, let me make this bigger. Remember, uh, to do all the things to make your stuff bigger is there is a pop-up window, and that pop-up window is under here. You got character, character styles, glyphs, open type, paragraphs, paragraph styles, tabs. Look at all these different options. And we're going to learn about them as we go along, especially when we get to doing the artist statement there will be a little bit more but today let's just look at character for a minute in the character window we can make the text bigger right here's point size if you don't see all the options there's actually more options than you can see here you gotta go to the upper right corner over here and it says show options notice how it has like a smaller window and many of the windows in illustrator actually have more options to turn the more options on is in the upper right corner of a pop-up window and say show options and what look boom more options show up uh, why don't they have all the options? I don't know. I, you, I'm going to make this text a little bigger. There it is. Okay, so not Canada College. I want the Enya here. Enya under the N, right? So how do I put the Enya? It's going to be lowercase too. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's all right. Option N? There you go. Puts the Enya, but not the N. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But if let's say you don't know the option keys, 
I don't know the option keys. I'm, I'm, you can do it by using glyphs. So to bring up glyphs is under window, type, glyphs. Okay, glyphs. So what are glyphs? Glyphs are extra characters. Okay, this is the ASCII code. Anybody heard of the word ASCII code? ASCII code? It's part of the original kind of computer. They wanted to be able to have symbols or you know represent information in the computer. And so what symbols do we know most about, of course, is the alphabet. And so when the computer was originally kind of being built, and we're going to the Computer History Museum tomorrow, remember that. If you want to go, you meet me there at 12.30. Okay? If you want to go on a field trip tomorrow, I'm going on a field trip tomorrow, 12.45, come around 12.45 at the latest. Uh, Computer History Museum, where is it located? It's up at the um, um, Word 101 in 85 Cross. Right there. Ten minutes away. They get the history of all computers. Beautiful place. If you've never been there, free trip. Free trip. Okay, so meet me there tomorrow, 1245. It's a lot of fun just to see the history of computers. But again, originally in the computer, they wanted symbols to represent information <coughs> in the computer. And what better is, of course, the alphabet. And so how do they do that in the computer? Well, they use what we call ASCII codes. And what are ASCII codes? It's where the code is actually, because the computer only knows ones and zeros. All it knows. So what they did was they took a series of ones and zeros to represent each letter. And that's what the term ASCII codes, and there's 128 ASCII codes. Here, if you can see. You can see the code right here. So uh, let's say I don't know what the Enya is. Let me do all lowercase here. Whoa. So I need to put the Enya in there, and I don't know the option key. I can come down here, search my ASCII codes, search my codes here, and look for it. Oh, what is this right here? No, that's not it. Where is it? Look at all these characters. Oh, look at all of them. Anybody see the Enya? This one. Oh, and it's an uppercase one. <laughs> I did lower lowercase one. Oh, there it is. There. Now it's Kenyatta College. Okay, so again, these so the reason why I'm showing you this is you can use these in your design. Right? Think of all the crazy hair. Which one of these looks like it might be an eyebrow? Maybe you're doing a face. Right? Which one's a smiling face? <clears throat> okay, so you're supposed to make a shape, an animal, a building, a face, anything. Did you see the elephant from the first week? I showed you an elephant. When somebody made an elephant out of all letters, all words that say elephant. Okay, you can use all these crazy characters, but use only characters. Don't try and start making shapes. This is part of this assignment, is I want you to think creatively with the shapes you have in your letters. And of course, these are all international. You know, I'm, I was teaching in Slovenia. They all had all kinds in that Slovenian language. They had all kinds of different characters like this. Okay, so. In addition, you can drag them out from this window. If I wanted to use this M, I can just drag it out. Or double click on it, maybe. That's it, double click. That's what I meant. Double click. Um, Whatever. You can. There's different options, I believe, here. Okay, there's different options here. Uh, some of the, there's some really difficult ones you got to deal with sometimes as far as letters. I don't know why. Oh, entire font. There we go. Mm -hmm. The at symbol. And so on. Okay, you understand glyphs a little bit? Somewhat? 
Okay, let's move on to coloring our text. Okay, so here's some challenges that you have in coloring your text. You can't necessarily just select your text and come down here and click the gradient option. The gradient didn't work. Look, I click gradient right here. Look, gradient. It won't show up on my text. And do gradient. Ah. But what you can do is you can take and fill the text with a new fill and then apply the gradient to a new fill. What am I trying to say? Well, there is a window called the appearance window. And what the appearance window can do is allow you to add more strokes. So maybe you want more than one stroke on your uh, something. You can actually apply more than one stroke. You know when you make a circle, right? You got a fill, and then you have a line that goes around the outside called a stroke, right? Well, what if you wanted to have more than one fill? or more than one stroke. You can do that in appearance window. So the only way to apply gradient to text is to use the appearance window. So here, so if I wanted to apply gradient to this, I would go under window, appearance. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see it. Window appearance, here is the appearance window right here. This is what it is. Right now it says, hey, you got some letters on there. Hey, I got letters on there. If you want to apply a gradient to it, you'll notice right here there is a new fill and a new stroke right here. So if I apply a new fill to this, I can then change this new fill to a gradient. If I can find a gradient, uh, here's this one. And it'll apply a gradient now. And then I can change that gradient to whatever I want. Oh, not a solid gradient. I want to, oh, here, gradient is over here. So there we go. So if you wanted something that looks like this, and of course you got your gradient tool that you can adjust the gradient. There we go, like that. If you wanted something like that, to apply a gradient to text, you use the appearance window and you make a new fill. It's this little icon right here, new fill. And then you can apply a gradient to that new fill. And it's normal text. You can type text, type, 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 type. In fact, that looks like the first logo I ever made for money, for real money. I made something that looks just like that logo for an art, art group in New York City. That's all I did. I made a gradient went from yellow to blue and some red in the middle. Maybe I'll find it for you and show you it. So gradient is this option. So type your text, click this option right here, the little square. Do I have a select? No, it's the text is already selected, right? As long as the text is selected, you click this option in appearance. And then here, here's gradient here. It makes black and white, right? But they're not all in this green and this one. This is right here, this little text. No, they don't work. It doesn't work on your text? Use the text tool, make sure you select it all. Okay, let's do a different example. Different example. So this time I'm going to actually make a, a, a block of text, and then I'm going to have the gradient go across the block of text or inside each letter. So you can actually adjust the text different ways, and I'll show you that. So let's say I I'm going to use the same, same example we did last class. I'm going to do my heart. 
let me do a heart. You do a heart. There we go. Oops. There we go. So I did a heart. So I'm going to put some text inside that heart. To put text in that heart, again, if you remember from last class, we were using the um, text tool right here. See, type tool? And I did type area type tool right there. See, area type tool? So if I go and I click, I can then start putting in my text. I'm going to make it a smaller, smaller, where's my smaller? And let me put some text in there. Oh, really? Notice how the text will stick inside. Oops. Okay, you get the idea. Text inside an object. Remember, when you do text inside an object, you remember it will... Um, remove the color of the object. Remember we had to go and and, and and make two duplicate the shape to be able to get the shape there because it removes it. Okay, so I want to do a gradient. Yes? The very way to like have a box, of, like say you make a box, fill it with love a bunch of times and then just use like make a shape and then just use the path finder to like just cut. Is that possible too? What do you mean by cut? Like you know how Oh yeah. You know how you I would use a, a clipping mask. Okay. You yeah. can do that. And then it'll just have, I mean, it'll probably cut yes. out, like, love a few times, but, I mean, at least it'll all be in the heart. Yes. Okay. okay. You can do that as well, and uh, we demonstrate clipping mask in next week. Okay, so what he's asking is if I make a, a box of text, right? I can make a box of text, and then if I want, I can draw a shape over top of it. And then select both options and then say object, clipping, mask, make. And the text will only show inside that mask. We'll do that next week, but this is possible here. And that's how I did it. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so we wanna we wanna put a gradient for our text here. We love this text, it's beautiful. Of course, I can't just come down here and click on this beautiful gradient because it won't work in my text like that. So I have to do what? Well, I have to go to my um, appearance window and apply a new fill. And then in that new fill, I can grab my gradient. But you'll notice that it goes all the way from yellow at the top here to blue at the bottom there. There is another way that you can actually do this as well is by um, changing the, um, I have to remember how I do that, changing this gradient to go across just one, no, it's not it. Um, Oh, what I wanted to say is if you want, you can actually change the text by converting it into an object and then applying the gradient to the object. So one of the problems you run into in Illustrator is, of course, fonts. We talked about fonts last class, and if you install a font on a computer, it, it's on that computer. And if you use it and you go to a different computer and that font isn't on there, it's not going to work, right? So one way we get around font problems is by converting the text into an object and then adjusting the objects <coughs> as you would any other object. So if I click on this, I can convert the letters to no longer being letters, but to being objects. To do that is underneath Type, Create Outlines. Let's create outlines. You see it in there? There, create outlines. Oh, there it is. Create outlines. Okay, what that does is it converts the letters into objects. Now, of course, you can't retype then because it's objects, but you can do other things. And I'll show you the other things. So if I create my text and I convert it into an object, remember, create outlines. That's been in Illustrator since the very beginning. That was a feature back in 1988. Create outlines. Old, old, old. Now it sees them as objects. 
And now since they're objects, what I can do is I can do different things with my gradient where I can use the gradient tool and I can go over letters like that or, let me see, I wanted to have letters go a different way and this is not doing what I want. No. I wanted it to have each individual letter a gradient. And I know there's a way of doing it. Oh, get rid of this. That's what it is. Get rid of that. And then do the gradient over each one like that. There you go. So don't use the appearance window. Get rid of that. And then apply gradient. And notice that the gradient now is in each letter. See that? Because it sees these as individual objects now. Where this is, the appearance window is overriding it. Does that make any sense? Let me do another demo with that. Let me let me do another example of that. Though I do like this one. I like that one. Okay. Let me do another demo. How about if I go and type in some text? We are the world. Let me make that bold. Ooh, I hate this font. Ooh, I love this one. No. There we go. Felt marker. There we go. So here we go. Uh, again, I can't put my gradient in that. Oh, I can't put my gradient in those letters. Won't work. But if I take, instead of using the appearance window, instead of using the appearance window, to put the gradient in this object, I'm going to convert the letters into objects. So that to convert the letters to objects, I go under Type, Create Outlines. Right there, see it? Right there, Create Outlines. Once it's an outline like that, then I can put my gradient in there. See how they're all there? And if you want it to be like the Kenyatta College example, you can actually do that by actually going and doing it like that or going across like that. You can do it as well, like that as well. This is how we make letters look like they're metal. Uh, how we do that is by putting a lot of contrast in our gradient. Um, so if we go to our gradient window, if I wanted to make um, metal looking text, I can do that by putting a lot of contrast in there. And then adjusting where it's at. This is, there we go. Something like, nope, not that. So you can get stuff that looks metal like that. The other thing to consider doing with your letters is not necessarily um, in the appearance window is also effects. So if you have objects, like letters here selected, or objects selected like this, you also have in the appearance window, effects down here. In the effects window, you can do things like uh, drop shadow, outline, blur. There's all these things down here. And you can do things like, uh, these are very common, drop shadow. So if you want a shadow, and you can adjust It's not very good. <laughs> so you can see you get a shadow. And so on some of those are located again in the appearance window. So if I want to drop shadow for this, or if I want to stroke around this, right now if I want to put a stroke around this, of course I can come over here and give this a stroke and it gives me a stroke. But I, I can also put another stroke on there, another stroke, 
And that one could be um, a different stroke. When a TV show, different strokes. And that can be half the size. So you can have like two strokes on there. Oh, that's not really working, is it? Oh, I needed to put this one above that. All right, this one. Oh, this one's smaller. This one's bigger. This one should be the smaller one. And this one a bigger one. No? Oh, it's there. You just can barely see it. But you can see here's the orange in the middle there. And so let's make this one even smaller. No, it didn't really work well. But it is working somewhat. Let's make this one bigger. And then this one, I guess I can make it, can I even make it smaller? No, it doesn't really work. But in theory, you can apply multiple strokes to some text. Multiple strokes to the text. Okay, let's talk about warping and uh, warping text. So you can think about the appearance window. It might be very helpful for you. Okay, so um, let me put some more text in there. Let's say I want to do a fish. So I want to take these letters and make them look like a fish. Okay, there is a text warp inside of Illustrator. That text warp is located in the, um, not in the appearance window. There is a warp right there, though. Yeah, it is under the appearance window. So remember appearance window right here? There's also right here at the top. If you have your text selected like this, see how I have my text selected? Look up here at the very top. You see this little option right here? That's like an envelope. You can warp things that way as well. Let's do the, the pre-made ones. Um, If you go under, again, select the text and go under effects, there's one called warp inside there. You got arc, you got lower arc, upper arc. Oh, here's fish. You got fish. And so I can preview that. There we go. It's a fishing. There we go. Fish looking. There we go. Again, there's an arc, if you want. Arc, lower arc, upper arc, arches, bulge, lower shell, upper shell. I don't know what all this. Flag waving. There you go. You got a flag waving. Wave. Fisheye. Rise. Fisheye. Ooh, I like that one. Flat, squeeze, twists. So those are ways that you can uh, apply effects. Okay, here's another way of adjusting your text as well. Uh, if you want to do a lot of effects to your text, probably converting it into an object. And so um, with this text, I want the bottom I want it to be kind of elongated. And doing this doesn't do any good for you. Look, I do that. Nah, that's not the effect I want. So I want it elongated like that. So what I'm going to do, instead of scaling it like that, I'm going to convert my letters to a object. Remember, create outlines. Create outlines. <coughs> then I'm going to use my white selection. Remember, once you convert text to an object, it's made of points. What I can do is I can select all the points along the bottom here, and I can scale them. Oh, why didn't it do it? Select all the points along the bottom here, and then scale them like this. Okay. Oh, I, I selected too, too much. Hold on. Let me get just a bottom. Let me get that. There we go. There we go. Something like that. So if you want something like that, again, you can convert your letters to an object 
and then you can manipulate it using the points along the edge. I've done that a lot in my life, doing that. Well, again, once it's, it's an object, you're kind of stuck. Okay, let's talk about putting some an image into my text. What if I wanted to, and you see this in Hollywood all the time, right, where they have the text flying in in a movie and you see the, see the video playing inside the text, right? You can, I could do that in a video editing application very easy. Uh, but here, what if I wanted to put a picture of a fish inside my letters here? I want an actual picture of a fish in my letters. Well, first let's go and find a fish. We'll find a fish. Fish. What's your favorite fish? Bass. Bass? You like bass? Oops. Bass. Or how about a bluegill? Uh, okay, here we go. Let's steal this uh, Guadalupe bass. Okay, and we're going to put the text inside there. So I can right click on there, copy my image, copy my image. I go back to Illustrator and I can paste it in there. Maybe make it a little smaller. Maybe make my letters a little bigger. I'm going to bring my letters to the top. No, bring my letters to the top. There we go. And then let's uh, um, make them a little bigger. Hold on, I'm getting. Um... Not quite fitting in there. Oh. I would love the fish to be the other way. Can I make the fish go the other side? Let's make the fish go the other way. There we go. Better. Oh, but I need his eye to be in there. Okay, how about that? Okay, so I have a picture and I have some text. Okay, and so I think I was demonstrating briefly about how to do the clipping mask, and that's what I would do. I would do a clipping mask. To do a clipping mask, basically you're taking an object and then you're telling what's behind that object to show only where the object is. <coughs> and that's called a mask. I'm sure you do lots of masks in Jean's class. She's a mask queen there. What we call her a mask queen. She likes using masks, doesn't she? Yeah, so it's the same thing, right? Same thing as in, in Photoshop, mask. So I can select both and go under Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And it will then, ah, didn't work. I did something wrong. Hold on. I know it's possible. What did I do wrong? Maybe it's the order. Maybe I need to... Oh, this is a group. Oh, it doesn't like the letters because they're a group. Oh, that's not going to work. Because these are grouped objects. It needs to be a solid object. So I, I'm going to use letters. I'm going to type in letters now. I love fishing. It has to be text text is the problem. Let's try again. Um... There we go. It has to be. The problem with this one was since I created outlines to, to stretch it, right? I had to turn it from text into an object and made all these individual objects. And when you're doing a mask, a mask can only be one object. You can't use multiple objects for a mask. Because if it saw this as multiple objects, it wouldn't do the mask. Mm -hmm. But it sees the letters as one object because it sees text as one thing. So you can get something like that very easily. 
And then, of course, if you want it to stand out, I might put a stroke around there, right? That would look cool, maybe. And um, so on. Yes? Does the text have to be readable? When you make the shape? shapes, uh, can you make it so tiny that you can read? Yeah, I can't see. Just to make it tiny so nobody can see it then. Okay, so don't forget about the appearance window. Very popular. Try some of those effects. There's a whole bunch of effects in there. Did you see them all? There's a whole bunch of them in there. Try them. Okay. Yes? Can you show that one you drew where, you, uh, where the text was just confined to the, the object that you created? Sure. You mean this one right here, this example? Oh, the heart one? Oh, okay, well, um, make a shape. Well, there's a variety. You mean with the clipping mask or with the text area? This one or the other way? Okay, I could just do another demo. That's fine. That's fine, yep. Okay, let's say I wanted to do a four-leaf clover. I'm looking over a four-leaf clover. Let me do a four-leaf clover. Where's my pencil tool? Pencil, there it is, pencil. So what's a four-leaf clover look like? One, two, three, four. There we go. Four-leaf clover. And so I want text to be inside as well as text go around the outside. I'm going to do two. So let me duplicate this object. And then let me put some text inside. Uh, again, the te put text inside is the area type tool, this one right here. See that? Area type tool. And then I click on the edge, and then uh, um, we call it Clover, C-L-O-V-E-R. Clover, ver, ver, clover, clover. Is that clover? And let's make it smaller. And then let's repeat it. Now, one of the things if you might want to do if you're doing this um, is to have the text um, center uh, uh, justified or center aligned like this. That makes it maybe fit better in a shape, either center aligned as well as if you wanted to stretch the letters to the shape. If you go underneath the um, go underneath the paragraph option right here, paragraph. In the paragraph option, you can have justified text, which is uh, uh, this one right here. And the letters will spread out and fit the shape. This is called justified. And so if I I type in um, clover a couple times, clover. Oh, really? Uh, really? doesn't like my there we go we're just gonna go like this how about that there we go okay so to get it to fit nicely in the shape I am using um, justified text under paragraph and then um, there we go okay so we got a bunch of clovers in there then uh, I might want to make it green right maybe it's green with a green gradient Maybe, I don't know. We can color it green, no. Green. Oh, you gotta select it first. Color it green. There we go. And then um, maybe we want text that goes around the outside that says clover, 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 clover. So remember the text along the path is this one. Type on a path, right there, this one right here, type on a path. And you click on the outside and you can have the text go around like that. Right? And then we put them together. How about that? So text on a path, text in a shape. And then how about duplicating this text a little bit? And um, back before there were drop shadows, we had to make our own drop shadow. So how I used to make my own drop shadow was just kind of move the text a little bit and then give it a color 
to do something like that. See that? So no needs to try. So, you know, to make text like that, I just duplicated it and moved it a little bit back in the PDP 11. And so when you go to the Computer History Museum with me tomorrow, look for the PDP 11, okay? And the software I used to use on PDP 11 was called uh, uh, Genographics. It was the name of the software, Genographics. And I used to do that with this because the computer program only had 64 colors. That was it. You guys are spoiled. You got millions of colors on this thing. I had to start with a computer that only had 64 colors. Okay, so I had to do things like this to make my text look that cool, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too many choices. Okay, did you all finish your fruit? All finished. What else were you working on? Don't you have something else to, to, to yes, talk about? Do a discussion on something, right? Well, I, I don't think you can do that. The point one. Take your time. Read that home. It's amazing. Uh, could you imagine a point being so important, though? I mean, that's the, that's the whole point of that reading is that a, a single dot. How important is one little dot? That's like a movie. Right? A little dot. Yeah. Yes. Which one? Prometheus? No. That, that popular 